I'm here at Carlisle today at the biggest Mopar swap meet in the world. We're still supposed to be wearing masks. The girl at the gate told me this one was scary. I said the reason we're wearing them is even scarier. But anyway, I want to show you guys what all I bring in my swap meet backpack. The best way to navigate a swap meet, in addition to the big stuff you're going to carry and put in your truck bed, you know, you need to bring blankets, cardboard, ratchet straps for all that good stuff, dollies, carts, but you should carry a backpack on it. Now this one already has some stuff I've been scavenging today. I'm gonna take that out. Picked up a cheap windage tray. Kind of easy to sit down and have a snack. Picked up a couple of center cabs. But you should start off with an empty backpack with a few little things in it. The only thing really heavy in the backpack, you should carry a big bottle of water. And don't worry about it weighing you down. In fact, I would take two of these because as the day goes on, this water goes pretty quick. You'll drink that much water in no time walking around the swap meet all day. What you should carry in your backpack to start the day, you should have a phone cord for your phone. wheels. Uh, you can measure port sizes with this. Sometimes your eye can't quite tell you if that valve is really 2.02 or 1.88, but with a tape measure, you can tell. Uh, so that's a handy thing. I strongly recommend to take the swap meat. What else do I have here? Yeah, print out uh, things like the maps. Like here's the event guide. And it has a layout of the maps for the festival and vendors and things like that. That's always handy to have. Also, if you need a cheat sheet to get casting numbers, years of certain things, um, let's say you're looking for a particular part like an armrest for a car. You know how many different armrests they put in these cars? I mean, all different interior colors, different shapes, with ashtrays, without, etc., etc. So if you have something specific you're looking for, you get all the details written down on a piece of paper. Uh, carry a Sharpie with you. A nice pen because you're going to give people, you're going to get business cards along the way, phone numbers, things like that. You want to write on the back what they had for sale. I've gotten home with cards from the swap meet and had no idea what the card was for. So you need to take notes as you go if necessary. And you can write down what space they're in, what row number. A swap meet this big, you're not going to remember. This is a city. Take an extra pair of socks. Your feet will thank you. You don't need swamp feet by noon on the first day. Tape. If you get loose parts, odd things, emblems, um, just just weird things that you need to tape up to keep them together in the backpack, tape is really handy. Take a bunch of empty bags. You can keep parts from getting scratched up. Also, um, I got a bunch of washers for mag wheels today, all set washers. You need a bag to keep those small parts in. You don't want to dump them in there and keep your backpack loose. Caliber. I saw a big pile of torsion bars today. Pile of them. He didn't know what they were out of. I didn't know what they were out of. But if I take my reference material that has the lengths and I take my calipers to get the diameters, I can shop for things like that that I ordinarily wouldn't have enough confidence to know what's what. This is 
also really handy for just measuring all kinds of things. Um, you might be surprised how many things you need to measure to know what you have. A real battery break. Those little ones may not cut it for something this size. That's it for now. The only other thing that I, I don't have with me today that's not a bad thing to have is one of those little tiny pocket multimeters. Uh, those can come really in handy when you're wanting to check for electric motors, uh, things like that. You want to see if they're still good. If you find some wires you need for a wiring harness and you want to find out if they're still intact, you can own them. That's a handy thing to have. You can get those for literally five bucks. This little pocket meters. And then you can just have one to keep them in the swap. So, hope this helps. <laughs> Booning hat like this is also nice to have. Otherwise, uh, back here. Swap meets are a lot of fun. And preparing for them like this makes it even more fun. I knew I'd forget something in the backpack. Another thing that's handy to have to swap meet is carry a good flashlight. Uh, I carry this one every day. If you want one dedicated to leave in your backpack, you can get a flashlight like this for a dollar and it'll do all you need it to do. Uh, when you're trying to look at casting numbers, you're trying to look at conditions of things, even though you're out in the day like this is really helpful. Here's just a handy tip, speaking of measuring things. You gonna help me measure? Uh, when you're looking at wheels, the width is measured inside deep, inside deep. So if we have a five and a half inch wheel, it's measured from in here to in here. Five and a half. Also, it's a 14 inch wheel. We measure from here to here. And like a beetle off my arm. So, 14 from there to there. Okay. And the last thing, if you want to know what bolt pattern it is, it's easy to tell the bolt pattern on something with four, six, or eight lugs because you go from the center of one to the center of the one across from it. But on a five lug wheel like this, <laughs> That's a four inch bolt circle wheel. And, uh, the center of one into the back of the one across it. That's the easiest way to estimate a bolt circle size. So, 14 by five and a half with a five on four inch circle. A small bolt pattern, no car rally. Now we know for sure what we have. Often do you see these vans that weren't just used up and jumped? This one's in show car condition. Cool, unusual thing that you'll only see at a show like this. Of all of the things you expect to see at a car show, this is the kind of stuff that I come here for. Uh, how often do you see a 1974 Dodge Dart four-door like this that somebody's taking the time to care for and preserve? Uh, that's what these shows are, are about for me. This is something we're starting to see more of these days, and I think it's really cool. People will find these barn finds, and instead of restoring them, they let them continue, in, they let them continue telling the story they were already telling, by leaving them as they found them. And I am all in favor of it. what the deal is on the regular 70 nose, but it says it's a Superbird. <laughs> 
Should look vaguely familiar to people who watch my channel. Um, this is kind of what my 73 Dart Sport should be similar to when it's done. A traditional old school racer like this. I like these kind of race cars where they have the period correct hood scoop and the center lines and really go out of their way to make it look like it raced in the 70s. Anyway, I didn't come to do comprehensive event coverage or anything like that, but uh, this place is huge. I don't know if I'll do a video tomorrow or not, but... Big place. I recommend coming to check it out. <laughs>